anything under the sun, I guess. How are ya? Well, all right. Yesterday, I got back from doing something I wouldn't shut my goddamn mouth up about for like a month. And while the main point of it was to capture two big things, which I did, and I'll be delivering on real soon, I really mean that. But so while those two things, interviews, was what I went down there to do, this right here is simply to tell you about it. And I will do that when, when I quote Anselmo, one on one proof, walk, right the fuck right now. One line sums it all up. I told this to Johnny Kelly directly and I think a few others in the room overheard it. And I told it to Kurt Winstein later in the night. But hold on a minute, I'm just thinking about that for a second. Some set of circumstances allowed me to be able to say that out loud. I told something to Johnny Kelly to Kirk Winstein. Those are two legends of heavy music that I got to fucking tell something to, man. But I told him this, I said, this was the biggest thing that I have ever done. And it was, man, it was. So yes, the point of the interaction last Tuesday, Halloween night in New Orleans was the interview I am. But check this out for a second, okay? If you're a regular viewer of this show, you probably know by now that I do try to present it like that, a show. But I'd be lying if I said it doesn't feel at times like, I don't know, I got friends here. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm friends with some of you. Because you're not just viewers, you're not just subscribers. You're something we, we are something that isn't just the name of track two on NOLA anymore. We are heavy metal lifers, man. And I think that really is an appropriate thing to say now that a lot of us are in our 40s and 50s and beyond where heavy music's been a thing for 40, 50 years and stuff. And the lifers have proven themselves in a later age where the fire and the passion for it burns just as fucking intensely as it did at 14, 15, 16, etc. So when I say the following, I feel like some of the lifers out there will understand and hopefully forgive me. I was nervous, man, doing this interview, being in the presence of these legends and gods. I was nervous. But despite that, I think I got a lot of good, interesting info out of these musicians about how the original formation of the band occurred and the writing and the recording of Dreams Always Die with the Sun. Details that I'm confident they haven't described as deeply yet. And the writing of, oh man, prepare for a heavy, heavy slab of some serious, as I put it, devil you know style, heaven and hell, Sabbath inspired, I am created music when, on November 24th, on Corpse Paint Records, make way for the wrecking ball titled Cryptomnesia, heavy, dark, cold. I heard it, and it's fucking awesome. So I got that, man, but I got more, much more, which, that's a good segue, that line, Marty DeBergi from This Is Spinal Tap, of course, because you know what, man? Try this one on. Imagine you're hanging out with the band, and you and Johnny Kelly start throwing lines from Spinal Tap back and forth and laughing together. That's one of the coolest things that's ever happened to me, man, trading lines from Spinal Tap with somebody like that. You know. Seriously, is that not something you have like funny dreams about? Dreams that day did not die with the sun because they took shape at Scyther's Seafood in the town of Harahan, just outside of New Orleans, where, all right, I'll give a rundown of how stuff happened with I Am, and it fucking went like this. Andrew Spaulding, owner and operator of Corpse Paint Records, picks us up at our hotel. Us, me, and shout out Alyssa, love you babe, brings us to the site of where stuff was going down. We get there and have a good hour or so to set up, and first, big major shouts and thanks to the staff at Scythers, making sure we had enough space and enough lighting and drinks and food and all just to prepare 
prepare for this interview. We set up and we're done. A little later, the winners of the contest put on by Corpse Paint and Metal Injection show up. The contest, if you missed it, meant that the winners, Nina Himes and her awesome husband Dylan, got to fly from Seattle to NOLA, courtesy of Metal Injection, to meet with and eat with and spend time with I Am. And I even got to chop it up with Nina and Dylan for a few minutes on camera. That'll be arriving shortly too. So okay, that happens. Then the door opens and in walks Kenny Hickey and his wonderful wife Bonnie. Then Kirk Winstein with his wonderful wife Robin. And then Johnny Kelly flying solo that night. And then a short while after, Mr. Todd Strange and his wonderful wife Tessa. And it's at that point, you know when stuff starts happening that whether it's good or bad, stuff's just so intense that it feels just kind of like, it feels like slow motion. It's almost kind of blurry looking back. So yeah, at that moment, it's pretty blurry and sparkly. And then finally, let's say the literature behind the media of all of it. Rockin' Raquel Figlo, who, yeah, it's the band's publicist, but you know who she's kind of like? Ah, someone else Johnny and I were spinal tapping it up about. Bobby Fleckman, Bobby Fleckman, Fran Drescher in the movie. So all right, the gang's all there at that point. And this is a small room, mind you. It is small and it is intimate. And there ain't a hanger on her in sight, man. At this point, for all that was needed to make the evening go down, it was pure and it was ready. But in order to ensure that everybody's feeling good and happy and fed, dude, I can't think of any other place in America better suited to provide comfort food than a seafood restaurant in New Orleans. Holy shit, the food. I'll put it to you like this. I almost made the grave error of letting my nerves and my reservations stop me from eating. But you wanna know what changed that? Or should I say who? I got a full plate in front of me. Me and Alyssa, we got a full plate of fried oysters and shrimp and all kinds of seafood. But then this big Mack truck of a man sees the plate just sitting there. A guy whose instrument kicks off the anthem Eyes of the South off NOLA, Mr. Todd Strange. He sees that plate and goes, hey, don't be bashful, eat up. So you probably know what I'm going to say next, and it's, if Todd Strange tells you not to be bashful and to eat that fried seafood, you eat that fucking fried seafood, man, and eat did I. So all right, all right, everybody's fed at this point and we're ready to roll. It's the moment of truth. And it's funny, because sometimes I'll talk to people for the first time off camera that maybe, you know, maybe they've only known me while on camera, and they'll say like, Wow, it's funny talking to you when you're not in character. Tom Noir said that to me, Tom from October Noir, who, yep, we got an interview with those dudes this weekend and it'll be here soon too. But so, that's funny to me because it's like, you know, I feel like it doesn't take a camera for the nutcase they see right now to start acting like that. It's just a condo about metal and that's it. But this time around, it was almost like the opposite because like, that record button starts and suddenly concrete spew is like soft serve spew. It's just, you know, this time it's real. Eyes of the South, the first line of the song. And really, like, you'll see all that, so I don't think I need to say anything about it now. But what I will talk about, the Halloween night hang afterward at Pat's Pub. Pat, the owner, Holly, who bartends there, big thanks. I left my debit card there, and later that night I get a message from the place like, hey Joe, you left your debit card here. Next morning, it's there waiting for me. But listen, man, you know what? Truthfully, I don't even know how to properly fucking describe it, really, other than just, you know, imagine you're chilling at a cool bar with the guys from I Am, their wives, Vinny from Exhorter, and you're talking cigars with them because he's smoking one. You see Kirk and Kenny playing air guitar to Black Diamond, Todd and Andrew Corpse Paint talking about Alice Cooper. You notice a down sticker on the wall that looks like it's been around since NOLA. COC sticker, crowbar sticker, and you realize you are in those guys' haunt, man. Their hang space, and you just, like, I can't even put it into fucking words just how goddamn unbelievably out of this world awesome 
awesome this experience was. And you know, it's like, again, I know they themselves will probably tell you, they're people just like anyone else. They put their pants on one leg at a time. But you know, some of us still see the world through youthful eyes, no matter what. And idols are idols. Oh, actually, a note on that, putting pants on one leg at a time. That was another fond memory. At one point during dinner, Kenny telling me to explore the space, a line from, yes, the Bruce Dickinson, Blue Oyster Cult's manager, Christopher Walken. Listen, I am doing a horrible, piss poor job of articulating all this, but perhaps if there's any way at all that I could even somewhat sum it up, which there probably isn't, but if there is, I keep going back to that one line, it was the biggest thing I've ever done. So for that, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say to everybody that was involved, Kenny, Todd, Johnny and Kirk, Robin, Tessa, Bonnie, Andrew, Vinny, Pat from Pat's Pub, Chop, one of Kirk's earliest bandmates that played Judas Priest and Iron Maiden covers, he told me. Oh, wait, there's something I forgot. Speaking of Kenny, imagine this. It's the end of the night, and people are starting to leave, and somebody taps you on the shoulder to say bye, and it's Kenny, and it's like, what? Imagine that. You know how many other people of status might just be inclined to split when it's time to split and not worry about saying bye to some small YouTuber who was clearly scared shitless the entire time that he's conducting the interview? Kenny tapped me on the shoulder as he was leaving to say bye. He didn't need to say a word to me, but he did because he's cool. And the entire crew that night was cool. Every single last one of them. And for that, from me, a fan, a light for heavy metal and a lover of heavy music. Thank all of you, all of you so sincerely and genuinely for being a part of a moment that I know at some point when I'm looking back and I'm thinking about the good times, I will remember last weekend in New Orleans as one of the brightest and most positive points I've ever experienced. My only regret might not be doing as good of a job expressing my thankfulness here in this video. Please believe me it's there, but I just don't know all the right words. Thank you, Nola, I am crew, and God bless all of you. Well, all right, headbangers, there you go. There was my attempt at painting a picture. Stay tuned for the I Am interview soon, and the October Noir interview soon. Tom, Tyler, and Doug, who picked us up from the airport. How cool is that? Theirs is coming up shortly, too, and if you haven't heard it yet, Letters to Existence is their latest album, so check it out and prepare to go on a journey, man. And me and James from The Friendly Men chopped it up with Andrew and Todd last month, and that one's imminent too. It'll be on the Friendly Men's channel. But okay, metalheads, my friends, if you like this video, well, you know, maybe you can give it a thumbs up. And or if you just like hearing somebody bullshit about heavy metal, then all right, cool, hit that fucking subscribe button like one of those sledgehammer things at a spring carnival, or you're at Canopy Lake in Salem, New Hampshire or something. I don't know, man. We'll see you next time on Concrete Spew, but until then, Stay wild, stay crazy, stay heavy metal, my friends.